So um, today I'm going to do a demonstration which in my opinion is designed for life. It's one of the most amazing experiments that you could dream of. And we're going to take a really, really reactive compound. We're going to look at phosphorus. And we're going to look at one of the allotropes of phosphorus. It's um, white phosphorus. It's a very, very strained molecule. It's very energetic. There's four atoms of, of phosphorus bonded together to form a, a, a pyramidal structure or a tetrahedral structure, which we know as P4. Now, all of these bonds inside this structure are very, very, very strained. They want to release energy really, really quickly, so they want to react with reactive things. So we're going to react it with oxygen to form from the, the, the oxide P2O5. And we're going to do that today in this flask. So it's just a simple round bottom flask that we filled with oxygen. Now, why have we filled it with oxygen? Well, we've done that because we want to increase the concentration of oxygen by removing the diluent gas, which is nitrogen, because nitrogen doesn't sustain combustion and will slow down the reaction. So what I want to do first is I want to test that there's no nitrogen in there. So I'm going to do that by repeating the first experiment that I ever did in science, which is to relight a glowing spill. So here we can see it's a simple wooden spill, which I'm going to light now. And Neil's got a torch. So here's the torch. So there we have our lighted spill. Now then, if I blow it out, you can see it's still got some glowing embers. Now if I put this into the oxygen-rich atmosphere, it should relight. So let's have a look. And now, straight away, you can see that the spill does relight. So we know that there's not very much nitrogen in that flask, so we can probably do our reaction with phosphorus in the quickest possible way. So here's the, the, the white phosphorus, the P4. And you'll notice it's stored under water because it's really, really reactive. If I take it out and I let it warm up, give it some activation energy, it'll start to react with the oxygen in the air around us. Okay? Now what I need to do is take a small amount out, dry it, and put it into our oxygen-rich atmosphere, and then just warm it up slightly to give it that activation energy to start the oxidation reaction. So this is a very reactive material, so I've got to be very, very careful with it. So if I take the top off and I select a small piece, of the phosphorus, and I think this one will be quite nice. So just take off the most of the water, drop it into the flask. So now you can see the phosphorus sitting inside the, the glass flask, which is purged with oxygen. We've put it on a small amount of sand just to raise it off the bottom of the flask. So Neil is now warming up this copper rod, which I'm going to use just to heat the phosphorus so that it starts to react, giving us that really quite nice combustion or that exothermic reaction with oxygen. Now we'll add a small amount of energy to the phosphorus and then we'll watch what happens. So instantaneously you can see that fantastic oxidation reaction as the phosphorus reacts with the molecular oxygen in the, vape, in the gas inside the flask to produce the amazing oxide, P2O5, which is hygroscopic and reacts with water. Now, fortunately for us, we don't have to breathe it because it's being drawn away up our extraction flames, up our extraction hood. But you can see that the flask is covered in this really quite nice white crystalline or powdered solid. And this is actually phosphorescent, so this glows even more. So we're oxidizing phosphorus, P4, with, with molecular oxygen to make P2O5, or phosphorus pentoxide, which is actually a hygroscopic. It reacts with water. So we've got to be very careful that we don't breathe it in because we'd make all sorts of phosphoric acids within our lungs, which is really quite da damaging. But this is actually used to dry molecules, to dry solvents, for instance, for synthetic chemistry. So it's quite a useful compound in itself.